I'm not afraid of the neg, but you have to be ready and prepared to handle that neg. And I thrive in chaotic circumstances. Still, they'll hit you with, we've got other candidates that have OR experience. Why should we consider you? Nine out of 10 times, I don't know jack about that job because if it were me and I already had OR experience, I wouldn't be here at Hello, and welcome back to the Tesla Chronicles, where I'm your host, Pierre Pacini, the guy that has the answers to absolutely everything that's medical device and pharmaceutical sales. Six You're not that guy, pal, trust me. You're not that guy. How was that? That that might be like a future intro, like, I don't know, 10 years down the road when I am that guy. Right now, I'm not that guy. Right now, I'm just the guy that's trying to make it and doing the best that I can, but also helping others break into this amazing industry. And that is why today has prompted this video where I am going to tell you guys how to overcome that challenge that is basically the neg that you get within either the first or the second interview when you're applying for one of those associate level roles inside of medical device and they hit you with the, yeah, but you know, you don't have any OR experience. And you just kind of have to wonder, why the hell did I hit you with this neg? But the thing about it is these interviewers, whether it be the manager or the director, they're just trying to see how you handle yourself under pressure. And you need to be prepared for that, okay? It, it doesn't really matter that you don't have OR experience, but they just wanna see how you're going to handle the fact that they're basically letting you know that you're not a top candidate anymore because you don't have it. So my advice to you is when you're interviewing for these roles, you have to do the research, okay? And that is not come to me and ask me, hey, what do I know about this job? Because nine out of 10 times, I don't know jack about that job, okay? I worked in lower extremity trauma, okay? That is it. I didn't cover anything else. I was not a joint rep. I was not a cranial maxial facial rep. Now, they have parallels to one another, and I can give you some advice on what those parallels are, but you need to do the research, and part of that is the networking on the side where you are reaching out to as many reps as possible. You are spamming their inbox and, and trying to get one of them on the phone so that you can have a conversation with them. And then from there, once you have an understanding of what the role entails, you're really hoping that they get you in contact, if you haven't already, with the team that you would be their associate. The thing about that is sometimes the management's going to tell you or going to tell that team not to talk to the associate reps until a certain level, um, uh, the future associate rep, until a certain level within the interview process. But you got to break that barrier as well. Sales is all about breaking barriers. And in that interview process, the barrier right now is you don't have OR experience. And if they hit you, which sometimes they will. Oh, they hit you with, we've got other candidates that have OR experience. Why should we consider you? You gotta be ready for that response. My response to something like that, if I was in your shoes, would be with the amount of information that I've gathered throughout the, in, like, throughout the, the prequel interview process or the pre-call planning phase, would be, look, I understand that that might be a concern for you, but after having a conversation with XYZ person, I'm coming to understand that most weeks we're gonna be covering let's say 25 cases, that's five cases a day. And we're turning over those sets and restocking them and bringing them back to the hospital system. I understand that a majority of that's gonna be my job. And I want to be able to do my job well, and I want to make sure that I'm an asset to the team. So by coming here and already letting you know that I understand what it's going to take for me to at least do my job well, I wanna let you know that the OR is not gonna be something that I'm not gonna be able to understand and be able to excel out excel at at the very beginning. I understand that there is an etiquette when it comes to the OR, and I understand that you need to have credentials and all of these other things. So for me to get all of that stuff ready and prepared, that's, that's not gonna take anything because I'm showing you right now that I've already come in extremely prepared for, for the process, and I can definitely take care of that without any issues. And my question to you would be, these other candidates that are coming in and applying for this associate role, what's going on with them? 
why would somebody that already has OR experience try to break into another associate level role? Is that because they're not doing too well in the current role that they're in and they need to create another lateral shift? Or is there a deeper lying issue that, that none of us are aware of and they're trying to make that shift? Because if it were me and I already had OR experience, I wouldn't be here at this uh, having this conversation with you. I would be having the next level conversation with you where I'd be trying to get a full line rep role with your team. But I don't have the OR experience, so I'm coming in and trying to show you that I am ready to take on that challenge. And to me, it's not going to be a challenge. If you want me to bring in a 30, 60, 90 plan on our next interview, I will. But I understand that this life and this uh, this role is just so chaotic that that 30, 60, 90 is not going to fly. But I will put in that work for you if that is what you're wanting to see. But understand that I know how chaotic this role is and I thrive in chaotic circumstances. I can make those hard decisions on what needs to happen next and I understand that my role as an associate is not necessarily having to make those hard decisions, but it's having to make sure that I have a game plan as to how I'm going to go about my entire territory, picking up the sets and making sure that I'm a positive asset for the, for, for the greater team. And that's kind of how I would handle the situation. I'm not afraid of the neg, but you have to be ready and prepared to handle that neg because it's going to come your way. And when it does, if you have a proper and strong response to it, they're going to be impressed by that. What they what they don't want to see is for you to cower and be like, oh, oh I know, I'm sorry, and uh, I've been trying to, to get experience, and that's why I want to get into this role. Like you, you've already canceled yourself out of any future interviews because you are tacit and don't have the tenacity to to really kind of push yourself into that next level and into that next phase and you're hoping to get into this role let them know that you are ready you are prepared you've done your research and this is exactly the role that you want to get into because of everything that you have learned and understand about the role they want to scare you out of this opportunity you have to go in there and show them that you're not afraid and that you are ready to take on that opportunity.